What's up, everyone? Lunch money time. Bang, bang. Well, she's trying to get rich. The rest of us are trying to get her lunch money right. I'm here with the sailor herself, Polina Marinova, striped shirt. Choo -choo. Or whatever. That's a train. That's not a ship. What does the ship do? Okay. Beep, uh, beep. <laughs> no, there's no horn on a <laughs> ship like that. Well, I guess there's technically a, horn See? a little different. Uh, it. Don't forget, lunch money <laughs> is sponsored by BlockFi. Right now, they have a special running. This is a no-brainer special. BlockFi.com slash lunch money. If you go there and you open an account and you deposit any amount of money, they will give you a double interest bonus. So normally you can earn up to 8.6% APY in an interest-bearing account. If you do this and fund the account before July 18th, they are going to give you a double bonus in August, meaning that you will get double the interest. All you have to use is the promo code 2x the number two the letter x go do it no brainer you get double the interest in the month of august blockfi.com slash lunch money or click on the link in the description what's up hey hey um so you know how amazon started amazon prime 15 years ago has it been 15 years apparently so all right yes i'm a prime member are you i'm not you're one with me <laughs> All right. So Walmart, 15 years later, is like, oh, wait, maybe we should do that. So Walmart is planning to launch something, a new subscription service later this month called Walmart Plus that will cost $98 a year. And it will include perks like same day delivery of groceries and general merchandise discount on fuel at Walmart gas stations and early access to product deals. Uh, how much is Amazon Prime if this is It started out at 99, but I think it might be higher now oh, for really? some people. Yeah. But so 98 is right there. Uh, do we know how many Amazon Prime members there are in the world? I don't know. Can you Google that real quick? Uh, the thing that's interesting is I love these businesses for a couple of reasons. So Prime, uh, Costco is actually very similar. Um, and then if you look at um, what Amazon's doing, and so Costco, I've talked about this before, but Costco's you profit love Costco. margin. Well, here's why. Because what they basically do is everyone pays $60 a year annual membership, and they find all of these things, and they sell them basically at cost in Costco. And if you take the number of members times $60 for Costco, that's basically their profit margin. Wow. All of the profit comes from the subscription uh, fee yeah. and then everything else is at cost. How many members? 112 million Amazon Prime members. So to give you a sense, that means that they are making, what is that? 10 billion dollars right is, is that it? right 100 uh yeah 10 billion dollars they're making if prime is just 100 bucks a year yeah 10 billion dollar subscription business ain't bad that ain't bad and the profile's only 50 dollars. <laughs> well, um, so do we think that walmart is doing this in response to amazon i mean i think it's about time they kind of have no choice. Right. But you know what was interesting? Like I was talking to my mom about this. If you buy the same product at Walmart, they still ship it like same day. Like you can still get same well, day. Well, it's delivery. guaranteed now, I think. It's the, oh, whole, I see, uh, I see. it's the whole key, right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, but I thought that was a lot of people didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, in COVID, panic buying has helped boost Walmart sales to record highs earlier this year. So Walmart's not doing bad. You know who is doing bad? Who? Brooks Brothers. God, Brooks Brothers. <sighs> so Brooks Brothers is was founded in 1818. And you think by the Brooks Brothers? What? Oh, probably. All right. Uh it's a it's a fine gentleman retailer. They also sell some stuff for women, but I'm not sure. It filed for bankruptcy on Wednesday. You do not shop at Brooks Brothers. Nah. I ain't a Brooks Brother type dude. I don't wear the salmon colored shorts or have my collar popped. Oh God. That's what the Brooks Brothers well, crowd does. Brooks Brothers has boasts of having dressed 40 US president and countless investment bankers. Uh, you also know who else has dressed a lot of presidents? Uh, Walmart. <laughs> Wrangler jeans. <laughs> I bet you Wrangler jeans has uh, done plenty of presidents. Because well, every president wears the old dad jeans. So, well, so this is this is kind of sad. It's one of the country's oldest and most prestigious retailers, and now it's filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, but remember, it's not going away. Right. It's just going to go through a capital restructuring. It'll still be here. 
Um, and look, at the end of the day, like this is kind of everything's already happening, right? In the sense of uh, the virus just accelerated trends. Like physical retail is becoming less popular. If I can buy the same stuff, el- the same stuff elsewhere, why wouldn't I? So the salmon shorts aren't going away is what you're trying to say. One, I don't think those are going away. But two, also on top of that is like, there's just new brands that pop up. Like Peter Millar is a great example. There's a guy I know who uh, who used to work there. And it's like kind of a golf uh, type fashion, whatever. But like that brand all of a sudden comes on the scene and people like the new, fresh, more modern version of what Brooks yeah. Brothers has. And also like the other piece of this too is, I bet you a lot of the customer base for Brooks Brothers is an older population and you just buy less clothes as you get older. Like you don't need new clothes to go to work every day, right? If you're retired and things like that. So I don't know. I think Brooks Brothers, there's some uh, young 25 year old men with uh, popped collars out there. Do you want to know a, uh, a fun fact? What? It is owned by Claudio Del Vecchio. It's probably Vecchio. Vecchio, okay. whatever. Who's the son of of the Italian eyewear giant, Luxotica, what? Luxotica? Luxotica. <laughs> People don't know that. I just learned that because oh, I read the internet. Okay. All right. What's going on with Uber? Uber, 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 So Uber. the tech press for years have has been asking Uber CEO and trying to figure out when this company will turn a profit. Now, Uber CEO says it will become profitable next year thanks to the Postmates acquisition. So it's very interesting. I think that uh, the kind of the Uber Eats Postmates um, division is doing better than the ride hailing. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a couple of pieces to this that that I think are are interesting. So one, you had the uh, legacy business. That was the core business. That was really the whole business. When they launched Uber Eats, it was like core business, Uber Eats. Now you've got this going on at some point. I still think Uber Eats only makes up like 20% or 25% of revenue. So it hasn't quite uh, kind of overtaken it, uh, um, the core business, but eventually it will. And if you think about the unit economics are better, Mm -hmm. it's easier, right, for them to operate. Uh, And so they're going to make a big ploy at, or they're going to make a big push into it. They're the second largest food delivery service in the United States. They're the first largest ride sharing service. And so they're doing exactly what you expect, whether you're moving humans or food, it's all logistics. Who would have thought when Uber launched that it was going to have an Uber Eats division that's going to do better than its core business? Travis Kalanick. Right. Because again, it all comes down to just being logistics. And by the way, Uber at some point will probably do packages as well. I think they've tested it before. Packages. Just think about all I need to do is I need to move something from point A to point B. That could be a human. That could be food. That could be a package. That could be all kinds of stuff. And so that's really what they're in. They're in the logistics business. Um, And so this makes sense. Dara, the CEO said, we're in the unique position of having the eats business to significantly offset headwinds in our rides business, because I guess it suffered during COVID. But look at how great it is to have multiple uh, streams of revenue. 80% loss in the ride sharing business, from what I understand. Uh, while the obviously the eats business or the food delivery businesses have all exploded in, in uh, popularity. Makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, Tinder. What's going on on Tinder? Why are you so excited about Tinder? I might need to do some product testing. Oh, just kidding. So Tinder is testing its video dating feature. Um, so now when you match with a person, um, it's going to unlock the video capability. So you can both meet via video. So you can do, just so I understand this, uh, I could then do like a video conference, like a first date virtually. I think so. Yeah. Got it. It's almost like FaceTime. Why don't you just FaceTime? Because you don't want somebody to know your phone number. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. See that? Yeah. Big privacy guy. No, like think about it. If you're a girl and you match with somebody and you then give them your cell phone number and then they're like calling you they're doing all kinds of weird things you can just unmatch them on the app right yeah so like i mean this makes a lot of sense especially when it comes to protecting people's privacy protecting their information all that kind of stuff and the other piece too is um my guess is that like this was accelerated probably we're already working on it but it was accelerated by the pandemic but it just goes back to this idea of like are you is everything just going to be virtual? Like Ready Player One is a great example. Yeah. Where you just, I'm going to look into my portal here into my virtual world. And when I do that, now all of a sudden I'm going to 
meet somebody there. I'm going to hang out with them yeah. there. Well, I think with COVID, because you're probably not going on real life face-to-face -face dates, this is the best first option before, you know, you put yourself at risk and go on a date with somebody. Why are you putting life? yourself at risk? Just wear a mask. Okay, well. Stop. By the way, I still think it's funny that it was at the CDC. Somebody uh, put a uh, look. She's she, she's she's trying <laughs> I to don't know, she, stop I, I, me there. The CDC, uh, I think it was them, gave guidance for uh, if you're going to have sex to wear a mask. This is a kid show. <laughs> I'm just saying. It. Okay. Um, well, so this is interesting. Tinder, Tinder's trying to like prompt people to agree on some ground rules from its community <laughs> guidelines. Keep it PG. No nudity or sexual content. I have a feeling they're not going to be able to police this well. And girls already suffer from gross dudes sending them pictures they don't want. That I, I don't know with this video. I feel like you're putting yourself at some risk of seeing some stuff you don't want to see. I'm willing to bet that women provide more nudity, nudity or non-PG content than men. No. Yes. Not unwanted Oh, unwanted is a different thing, but I'm just saying, uh, the, look at the end of the day, this is a big technical challenge, right? Like if you try to use computer vision or any sort of, um, like artificial intelligence, object detection, like there's all kinds of things that you can do. A lot of platforms have spent a lot of time building this type of stuff. So like Facebook and these people, like if a photo gets uploaded, they try to be able to tell like what's in the photo, um, all that kind of stuff so they can scale the, the kind of community, uh, um, yeah. governance. It's going to be really hard to do on live video uh, because there's probably no, um, uh, they're, they're probably trying to have as, as little delay as possible. Do we think that Tinder is saving this data and this video content? I mean, I have no clue, but again, you know, we saw what TikTok's doing, so I wouldn't mess around with that. All right, what's going on with Kanye? Okay, Kanye. Kanye a, is a genius. Kanye freaking loves Forbes and he did an exclusive interview with them. And he disclosed that he is running for president 2020 under a new banner, the birthday party, with guidance from Elon Musk and an obscure vice presidential candidate. He's our chosen. Who do we think it is? Um, Kim. No. You don't think so? No. I bet. I mean, it would be cool if he did that. Uh, they wouldn't win, but it'd be Kylie. cool. Kylie? No. I, I, my guess is that it is... Chris Jenner? No. My guess is that it is... Um, somebody in the business world that people really respect and will be surprised but impressed but charlie impressed. munger no come on um, yeah. i mean look i don't believe him that he's actually running to win because he hasn't even filed the paperwork yet so you can't get you can't even get on the ballot if you didn't file the paperwork but can't he do that as a write-in candidate? He could try as a write-in candidate, but like that's never happened and, and is very unlikely to happen. Yeah. Well, here's my favorite part of this profile. They asked him, why the birthday party platform? And this was his response. Because when we win, it's everybody's birthday. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? By the way, Polina left out a detail that I just read. What? He already announced who his running mate is. Wait, where? Who's Michelle Tidball, an obscure oh. preacher from Wyoming. Oh, he loves the preachers. So he has a preacher that is okay, the, okay, the Michelle, uh, so see. not a business person. God, Michelle, is, what if Michelle didn't even know that she was getting announced here and then bam. Yeah. So Michelle Tidball is uh, pr the proposed presidential running mate. And uh, I think that they call her let's see here real quick uh a yeah, biblical life coach his biblical biblical life coach remember which, kanye has a church yeah in I wyoming mean, hey to be honest it's got pop and music it's the best musical uh, performance in a church in america probably probably right all right what, what's next so, oh cat cole bang bang so our friend over here interviewed cat cole video is out today i got i had the pleasure of listening to it live um she is an absolute savage uh, true, she, truth. She true. is the president and COO of Focus Brands, a company doing nearly five billion in annual revenue. And they, um, she's a former president of Focus Brands subsidiary Cinnabon. And prior to that, she was an executive vice president of Hooters. So Kat Cole started out at 17 years old as a waitress at Hooters, 
rose in the company over about 15 years to become the exe executive vice president. She went around, she was opening all of these stores for Hooters uh, all around the world in Australia and South America, et cetera, uh, in her young 20s. Um, she early. eventually, early 20s, she eventually was uh, recruited to become the president of Cinnabon. Uh, and she led the turnaround of Cinnabon during the financial crisis. Um, and then Cinnabon is owned by Focus Brands, which is kind of like a holding company or parent company. They also own Auntie Anne's, Most Southwest Grill, Jamba Juice, a bunch of brands that you would know. Um, and so she runs the whole thing. It's five plus billion or about $5 billion in revenue. And so uh, I highly suggest going and listening to this interview for two reasons. One, um, it is by far the most she insights per minute that we've ever had on the podcast. <laughs> like she, she just has been doing this for a very long time and is able to articulate business lessons that you could go pay for an MBA and you'll never get. Like she Because she has it. specific anecdotes and examples. What was your favorite thing she said? My favorite thing is that she said, uh, most people would be better off if they did one thing in their professional careers, which is when you receive criticism, immediately default to the idea that it's true and mm -hmm. then operate from that perspective. Most people, when they get criticism, they immediately, they, they pull back or, or they, they fight the it. They, yeah, they argue, they're, they get defensive. They don't want to believe it. But she said, if you simply get criticism and you just say, that's probably true. How do I fix it? Let me go learn more, right? And, and kind of attack it that way. You'll be way, way better off. Um, and so that, that all is kind of one piece. It's just the, the amount of business knowledge in this episode is incredible. The second thing that I will say though, is uh, you get to hear just really cool stories around what they've done to combat a lot of trends. So yeah. they've got stores in malls. A lot of people think mall tra traffic is going down. So what are they going to do? Food deliveries become this hot thing, right? The pandemic obviously shut down a bunch of Crazy their stores. Crazy diet fads. Yeah, pe yeah. people don't want to eat Cinnabons every day, right? So just we go through kind of all of the things that they've had to deal with. And she's able to articulate like, this was the problem. Here are our options. We chose to move forward with this option. And here's how it played out. Um, and so I think people really enjoy it. Um, can I tell you my favorite part of it? Sure. I, so she explained that she, she was like six or nine months into the job and the founder's son, uh, she made a decision and the founder's son emailed her from Cinnabon from Cinnabon. Um, and he's normally a very mild mannered man, she said, but she received an email from him that said all caps WTF in a million exclamation points. And she was like, Oh no. So Anybody who receives that email is bound to like freeze or freak out or, you know, try to respond in some weird way. She said, I did the only thing that you have to do to earn their respect, which is pick up the phone and I immediately, think, immediately and call him and try to understand the situation. And I think that that's so true because so many times we let things linger and we let things fester or we respond back with some passive aggressive email that's just no help. Um, so I think that like to remedy any situation, you just directly pick up the phone or go in person if you can and uh, get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Basically, the more time you let elapse during an yeah. issue, the worse it gets. If you can very quickly just say, oh, wait, there's an issue. Let me attack that issue in terms of uh, let me work to solve it and immediately talk to somebody yeah. uh, ends up being uh, pretty effective. And you know what I love? I love that she's like, me? on. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. I love that she's like honest about, she's like, I literally cried my eyes out every day for two weeks and all this stuff. And like, you don't actually ever hear business people talk about that stuff, but because of those experiences, she's learned to become so confident in all of her decisions. Um, and I think that that's what makes a really great business leader. Yeah. It's super impressive. Go watch it. Any last parting words for the people? Um, be kind to your friends this weekend. Is today Wednesday? Today's Friday? Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. So, so, oh, wait, I have a joke. Kind of, oh, my God. Oh, I thought we got away with no, it. Hurry up, you got 45 not. seconds. Okay. What did the I duck, thought we got away with it. What did the duck say when he bought lipstick? What did the duck say when he bought he lipstick? He or she, it doesn't matter. It You're not was get it. quackful. What does that mean? No. Um, put it on my bill. <laughs> See? <laughs> it's pretty good.
It's a pretty good. <laughs> I might start rating your jokes. That's like a, a 5.4. What? Yeah, 5.4. That was like a, an 8.9 at least. No, we are we are tough graders around here. I didn't even laugh. I just kind of uh, huffed. Okay, what was a nine? The one that you laughed with the That's pain. it for lunch money today, guys. <laughs> we'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, while she's trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. Get money, get paid. Choo-choo. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi, so go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind <laughs> Polina. They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account. Or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.